We know that Allah Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal has chosen certain people from amongst the human race. Among the few that Allah Azza wa Jal had chosen as messengers, the greatest of all of those messengers happens to be our messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet والسلام, quite clearly mentioned this in a hadith in which he said, I happen to be the master of the children of Adam and there is no boasting that I'm doing over here. This happens to be the reality. The poet of the Prophet وسلم, he used to say that more perfect than you, O Messenger of Allah وسلم, my eyes have never seen. More beautiful than you, O Rasulullah وسلم, women have never given birth to. You've been created free of all defects as if you've been created just as you yourself had pleased to be created. We think and we see that people who were just yesterday Disbelievers, they would come before the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam be in his company and not even completely just for a couple of days and they would accept Islam. And to this effect is the story of Thumamat ibn Uthal after the battle of Khandaq. He came to the outskirts of Medina and he was taken in as a captive and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought him to his mosque and placed him in his mosque and he stayed there for a day, another day, a third day and on the third day after just a few conversations with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said to him that by Allah before today there was not a face that was more disgusting to me than your face and today it has become the most beloved of faces to me whoever would see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just like that by chance from a distance he would be feared because the Prophet had an aura of a leader but and whoever would meet the Prophet Sallallahu and get to know the Prophet والسلام, that person would begin to love the Prophet We know the Prophet والسلام, was so perfect that every single detail of his life has been reported to us. Even how he used to bathe, even how the Prophet Sallallahu would get, become intimate with his spouses, even that has been reported to us with great detail. And this was done not so that the privacy of the Prophet would be unveiled, so that it becomes an example for us, because Allah told us that the Prophet ﷺ happens to be the best example for us. When you look at the phys physiques of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ is as perfect as humans can become physically. When we think about the strength of the Prophet ﷺ, he's the strongest man to ever have lived. And in that time, there was a man by the name of Rukana. He thought he was stronger than the Prophet ﷺ. So the Prophet ﷺ pinned him once, pinned him twice, and pinned him a third time to show him that you're not the strongest man. The Prophet ﷺ was the most intelligent person who was ever born in the history of mankind. The Prophet ﷺ was the most pleasant when it comes to his order, so much so that some of the Sahaba would take from the sweat of the Prophet ﷺ and they would use it as perfume. The Prophet ﷺ was perfect in all of these ways. He was the embodiment of true perfection. When we know this, then we understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran to send salat upon the Prophet ﷺ. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا Indeed, Allah Azza wa Jal and His angels, all of them, they sent salutations, they sent salat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O who you believe, send salat upon the Prophet sallallahu and also send the peace upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah starts this verse off by telling us that إِنَّ اللَّهَ it Indeed Allah رَبُّ الْعِزَّةِ وَالْجَلَالِ We said that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the embodiment of human perfection. Allah is infinite perfection. You see, 
human perfection still has to come with imperfection. Because there's a human aspect of it. It still has to come with imperfections. The Prophet wasallam, the beautiful face of the Prophet in the battle of Uhud was scarred. The teeth of the Prophet wasallam was scarred. And this was all to show us that one day the most perfect of humans will also be imperfect because he happens to be in some capacity, because he happens to be a human at the end of the day. But Allah is infinite perfection. So Allah Azza wa Jal is about to do something, then this matter, this matter must be a very serious matter. It must be a very important matter. And that's why Allah starts by saying, Inna Allah, indeed Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. And not just Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, wa malaikatahu, and all of the angels of Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal as well. Okay? What does it mean to send salutations upon the Prophet ﷺ, especially when it comes to Allah Azza wa Jal? So some of the scholars, they, they say that this means, and this is the opinion of Abu Aliya, some of the scholars, they say this means to, to praise the Prophet ﷺ. And another opinion of some of the scholars is that it happens to refer to the mercy of Allah. And also, and a third view is that Allah Azza wa Jal is forgiving the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. Now some scholars such as Ibn Hajar al-Haytami, they said we can try to combine all three of these opinions. And we can say that generally it means Allah Azza wa Jal is praising the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah is additionally sending His barakat, His blessings and His mercy upon the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And additionally, Allah Azza wa Jal is also ridding him of the due of any mistakes, even though those mistakes were not sins when it comes to the Prophet ﷺ because he was infallible. So Allah tells you Allah is praising him, and you people also start praising him. His angels are praising him, who happen to be royalty themselves because they are his angels, and they're not addressed by the address of the Messenger ﷺ. But even then they happen to be praising the Prophet ﷺ. You people who have been granted this mercy embodied within this world, the Prophet ﷺ, then you should have enough of a reason now to praise the Prophet ﷺ. Ya ladina amanu, O who you believe, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa zidu wa barik ala nabiyina Muhammad. O who you believe, what does that mean now? Whenever Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu in the Qur'an, you gotta start thinking along these lines. That whatever Allah is going to say next, this happens to be something related to belief. So it's from the perfection of a person's faith to send salutations upon the Prophet ﷺ. And to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise the status of the Prophet ﷺ. You see my dear brothers and sisters, the scholars of Islam mentioned that Salat upon the Prophet ﷺ, considering this verse, happens to be an obligation. The primary rule is, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to do something in an imperative tone, that means that we have to do it. And that's why the scholars of Islam, by the consensus of the scholars mentioned, as a bare minimum, it is an obli obligation upon a Muslim to send Salat upon the Prophet at least once within his life. And other scholars, they went even further and they said that is generally an obligation without any limitations, but at least one is sufficient. Now, of course, the more, the merrier. And this salat that we send upon the Prophet والسلام, what does it actually mean? Because we said from Allah, it means three things. And from the angels, what does it mean? From the angels, they said, it means a dua. To give him all three of those meanings, that he would give when he sends the salat directly from himself upon the Prophet ﷺ. Which was what? His praise and mercy from Allah upon him and also forgiveness. And similarly, when the human beings also send salat upon the Prophet ﷺ, they're doing the same thing. They're making dua to Allah ﷺ to grant him more of, of praise, to grant him more of rankings, to grant him more of perfection through the perfection of his message through the continuity of his legacy, through more perfect people being born within this ummah, it is encouraged or it is best 
I'm not saying it is impermissible. It is best for us to make sure that this word we use for the Prophet Muhammad and if we really end up using it broadly then for the other messengers as well in the Prophets but not for the general people. For them we make dua and we don't use the word salat. Now it is true that in some cases the Prophet wasallam he actually used the term salat for some of the regular Muslims as well, right? So the Prophet ﷺ, for instance, he said, O oh Allah, send salat upon the family of Abu Awfa. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, O oh Allah, send your salawat and also your rahamat upon the family of Sa'd ibn Ubadah. But the scholars, they said, the Prophet ﷺ chose this particularly for specific individuals. It doesn't mean we generalize. Other than the Prophets, we don't use this word. And if we wish to, there are some scholars who said otherwise, but I discourage it nonetheless. Use it for the Prophet ﷺ because generally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to do that. And also there's another reason. There's confusions that can occur. And believe it or not, some Muslims who haven't studied their beliefs correctly, they may not know the names of all the Prophets. So if they hear you saying Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after another man, immediately the first thing that will come to their mind is what? Maybe this person happens to be a, a prophet. So since this term has become particular to Prophet Muhammad and generally used occasionally for other prophets as well, then we say that we don't use it except for the prophets. Okay? Now, us sending salat upon the Prophet Why should we do it? Well, because it happens to be a commandment from Allah. But sometimes we say, okay, it's a commandment from Allah, we'll do it once. In Salat, every single day we do it. Other than that, why do I have to do it? Well, we say there's a lot of benefit in it for you as well. The Prophet ﷺ told us so many ahadith, many of which happen to be authentic as well. So for instance, the Prophet ﷺ, he told us in a hadith, there's not a single slave of Allah Azza wa Jal who happens to be a believer and he mentions salutations upon me, he sends Salat upon me, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do the following for him. Allah will write for him 10 hasanat. Allah will wipe away for him 10 sins that he had committed. And in addition to that, Allah will raise 10 ranks for him in Jannah. So three things simply by sending a single salat upon the Prophet ﷺ. In addition to that, the Prophet ﷺ gave us even more clarity in this regard. With also a hadith that happens to be good in terms of its chain. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever sends 10 salawat upon me, Allah sends a hundred salawat upon him. And whoever sends a hundred salawat upon me, Allah Azza wa Jal does it a thousand times for him. And whoever becomes very, very, he starts to gain shawq, he longs for me, then I end up interceding for him on the Day of Judgment. I, and, and I end up becoming a witness for him also on the Day of Judgment. So let's say, Allahumma salli wa sallim wa zid wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Every time we say Muhammad, let's say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At least once within the gathering, as we said, it is necessary. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the miserly individual happens to be the one I, who I am mentioned within his presence. And then he doesn't end up sending salat upon me. This individual is the one who is truly miserly. Another thing to, by the way, note is, and this is a side point, there are actually many different ways to send salat upon the Prophet ﷺ, right? One of those salawat, of course, is the one that you read in your salah every single day, which is known as as salat al-Ibrahimiyya. This particular form, or this formula of salat upon the Prophet ﷺ was actually mentioned and prescribed by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the two-thirds of the night would finish, he stood and he said, Ya ayyuhan nas, O people, remember Allah. Very close happens to be the first blow in the trumpet by which the Day of Judgment will come. And the second blow will come very soon after that as well. The death is here along with everything that happens to be within death as well. Ubayi, he says, Ya Rasul Allah, I send a lot of salat upon you, O Prophet Wasallam." How much of my prayer should I make for you and specify for you, O Messenger of Allah? The Prophet ﷺ said, as much as you so please. So Ubay said, should I make a fourth of it for you, O Prophet of Allah? The Prophet ﷺ said, 
as much as you please, but if you want to do more than a fourth, then it's going to be better for you. You want to do more than a fourth of your personal dua, instead of making it for yourself, you make it for the Prophet ﷺ, it's okay, it's better. So he said, فَالنِّصْبِ Then maybe I should make half of my dua for you. He said, as much as you please, but if you want to go even further, then it will be better for you. So then he says, فَالثُلُثَيْنِ Should I make two-thirds for you, O Muhammad wasallam? He said, as you please, but if you want to keep going further, then it will be even better for you. He said, should I make all of my dua for you, O Prophet of Allah? Because remember, the, liter- the literary meaning, or the literal meaning for the word salat is dua. So he's talking about dua over here. Should I make my dua for you, O Prophet of Allah, all together? The Prophet ﷺ said, if you do that, then all of the worries that you have, Allah will take care of them for you. And all of the sins that you have, they will also be forgiven for you. So if you want to live a worry-free life, then send salat upon the Prophet ﷺ. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to constantly and regularly uh, engage our hearts by mentioning Allah Azza wa Jal and also by mentioning Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allahumma salli wa sallim wa zidu wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in